interest what was your interest in getting the book um the guy recommended you so i went to your website and looked around because uh I'm kind of overwhelmed with it. You know, I read the, the, the online book on the Facebook group, but it didn't really tell me, you know, day one, try this, or, you know, I'm just like, okay, so, okay, I know about it now, but right. knowing and doing are two different things. Right. The, uh, take a breath. So yeah, so he told me just to try a little drop. So you know, I did. And of course, last night I ate or I ate asparagus yesterday and I was like, oh my God. Yummy. <laughs> so um, um, one, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm putting together a urine therapy 28 day calendar. Let me get the big picture. Don't go anywhere. I'm gonna turn this recording off. Uh, I'm with you. We're gonna keep going here, Laura. There are baby steps you can take, which means you'll start off with an ounce. That's that what I did. Can I put it in water, though? I put it in water because the guy said, just put a little bit in your water and get used to drinking it. You can do anything you want with it as long as it gets in the body because the, by the nature of Shivambu, it will alchemize whatever it touches, which means it will raise the vibration and neutralize the water, the chemicals in the water, uh, toxins in your mouth whatever it is. So even though you're not drinking it or applying it full strength, you still get the benefits like doing homeopathic remedies. Okay, good, good. Because I put, put it in water, especially with that asparagus. I was like, oh my God. Well, here's old school, straight from the tap. So um, does anybody use like one of those collector things like you can put in the like for the when the old people put in their toilets or whatever they're they're just like these plastic things or yeah you know just i don't know yeah they're the How kind you get the, this is the kind you get at the hospital yeah because i you know you hear about the clean catch and the germs and you know now i'm like oh my god what do i do yeah well uh, as you uh, study more from the book, or if you ever want to do one-on-one -on -one consultations with me, it's, it gets simpler and simpler. Uh, there's some really basic tips. With, did you join the Shivambu Hut? I don't know. I went you, on your website and signed up. Okay, was that Shivambu.org? I think so. Okay. And then I made a, I did make it look like a Facebook page thing, but... I didn't understand it. So I have a, a page somewhere for me. Okay. At the shivambu.org website, there is a link to the Shivambu hut. When you click it, you go to the hut, you get your free membership, and you get to read lots and lots of content that I've been posting, that members have been posting, that range from teaching to videos to articles uh, to uh, testimonials. Yeah, I signed up for something and I made a page that looks similar to a Facebook page. But then when I tried clicking on stuff, nothing happened. Right. So, um, so my suggestion is go back to Shivambu Org and look for a link to the hut. If you get confused, send me your email and I'll send you a direct sign up link. OK, great. So I want you to remember some of the main, the main points. One is I just mentioned that uh, Shivambu. Now you can call anything you want. A lot of the devotees call it Shivambu because it has that, in, that Hindu India vibe to it. Shivambu actually means the water of Shiva or blood of the Lord. Some call it Orin. Some people call it Amaroli. Some people like in Africa, they call it Zito or U juice. It's whatever you resonate with. Right. I know someone on the Facebook group posted an anti-urine article that said all that today. You know, oh, that so, they're saying, no, doctors say you can get sick and there's bacteria in there and people are drinking cow urine and dog urine. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. And camel. Yeah. Which is great. So you can see that there's always going to be naysayers. For everything that's good. Yeah. And our I job know. is to be able to see through it. I, yeah, I know. Because since I've been uh since I've become a um, uh, popular and well-known across social media, I get plenty of trolls and the folks that are trying to bash what I have to say, and I don't take it personal. Besides, I know how to process these people. 
So you just can't let it get to you. you go next. <laughs> yeah, so the, the second thing to remember is that using Shivambu is all intuitive. It speaks directly to you. It tells you when, how much, how often, which, which protocols. Uh, now in both the books, I have the protocols. Uh, the first book, the one that you're getting has 11 protocols that I wrote about in 2018. But there's been uh, 10 more, uh, 13 more that I came across over the last three years. So all 24 are in this book. And if anybody else is watching, or if you want um, the free PDF version, it's a, we have, we're offering it to Shivambu Hut or by email, uh, the 49 page uh, PDF um, instructions on the 11 of the protocols. Right, right. Because, uh, yeah, I get that. The reason I went, on the, I went, the book I saw that I bought, I really liked it because it had a prayer in the beginning of it for the water. Because I pray over water all the time. And so I saw that prayer and I'm like, oh, I want that prayer. This prayer? Yeah. That's the well, book I bought. Thank you. Um, on our Zoom calls, when we do the World Urine Therapy Conference calls twice a week, uh, twice a month, we start off with prayers. We honor Shiva. We hold up our water. We do a toast, a communion, and everybody gets a chance to uh, join in on that. That's good. I love water. Well, the more now, how long have you been doing uh, Shivambo? Like two days. Two days. Oh my goodness. You're, you're, you're doing great. Two days. <laughs> yeah, two days. The little droppers. Okay. Um, droppers are a great start. These are baby steps. That's what he told me. He's like, just get a drop. Just take a little bit. Just do it. Just start, just start doing it. And I'm like, okay, well, that was he, easy. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. And I want you to remember everything that you do on your journey, because this is duplicatable. When you get rock solid with this as, a, as not only a uh, healing modality, uh, it becomes a lifestyle in which it's your go-to. Whenever you get sick, stung, scratched, bitten, cut, that's your go-to medicine. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of clay because bentonite clay is kind of like that too. You know, it it's, does everything. Yep. You know, and even they, some scientists think it's the origin of life because when created with certain enzymes creates new cells. Yep. So clay is another good thing, but I can't drink clay because I get too constipated. Yeah, well, you won't with Shivambu. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I've been teaching is something I learned from John Turmel. John Turmel has been doing urine therapy for 20 years, and he's a, uh, a well-known uh, social activist in Canada. And he's been dubbed the world's smartest man. Well, I interviewed him about uh, five or six months ago. And he says, if you drink this, and I started doing this, if you take a whole liter or a quart and drink the entire thing, when you get up in the morning, you'll have multiple bowel movements, different waves through your intestines. You better stay near a toilet. Uh, when I did it the first time, I had five bowel movements in about 20 minute period. It just kept waving through my colon just kept having contractions and expansions. And then two hours later, I had two more bowel movements and I had I was fasting that morning. Yeah, about 20 years ago, I lost all the chi in my internal in my middle burner. And so, uh, and yeah, now? it's going to take a force of nature to get it to work. That's for sure. Yeah, well, you have it in your bladder. That's what I'm hoping because it's kind of do or die at this point, you know? Yeah. And, well. and I do. So I've been sun gazing and praying and meditating a lot, you know, because I deal with a lot of, because I have, I recovered from a dissociative disorder and amnesia and a bunch of trauma and, but I still tend to, you know, eat and I, and food that I'm a bile ducts all screwed up and, you know, I don't know what it is. I suspect liver flukes. And my doctor was going to try to help me and figure out how to get me the treatment for it somehow. And then she disappeared. She got fired or something. From my doctor. She was a good doctor too. And now she's just gone and no one can say, tell anything about it. Well, but, 
Are you open to the possibility of healing everything? Yeah. Right, take, take a breath. We've got Natalie about to join us. We're going to talk about fasting today. That's Natalie. what I want to do is fast. That's my goal. All right. Our sister Natalie is in the house. That's her in her angel chair. So um, uh, when I do consultations with people, I ask them uh, within the first couple sentences, are you open to the possibility of healing everything you've been challenged with up until now? If that's a yes, then you can proceed forward because all that's required to heal yourself, and this is right out of A Course in Miracles, uh, is a shift in perception. And that shift takes place when you're no longer run by fear, concern, or doubt, and all the labels that you've been telling yourself or was given to you by the medical profession drops to the side, and you have a crack of a chance of seeing yourself as whole and in perfection again. Take a breath. Shivambu has a way of speeding up the process. And when you really get the, the wisdom down that Shivambu can eliminate hunger signals, can provide you with full out nutrition because it is the mother of all superfoods. Uh, and it can move energy that you couldn't necessarily move through herbs, nutrition, diet, exercise, and so forth. So the intelligence and the, the energy that comes built with your body, which is what the creator gave you, goes right into full out gear once you start returning the water back to your body. How's that for a, a lovely gift that your uh, body gives you? Sounds wonderful. I mean, it makes perfect sense. We shouldn't have to pay to live on our planet or for medicine or for, you know, doctors or we shouldn't pay for any. I don't think I don't think it was designed to be that way. I mean, it is that way now. I mean, you know, because we created the system, but I don't think that, you know, that it was that it can work without that. All that. I think that that's there. Well, it's there. And we're in the middle of two parallel realities going on simultaneously. I mean, you've got the reality that you think you see out there in the world, thanks to media and television and even social media. They present a version of reality. It's called the agreed upon reality or the collective consciousness. Then simultaneously, you have God's world. I mean, you, right. have the, you have the presence of God, the divinity within you, the light that shines through you, showing you, hey, where do you really want to put your attention? All right. So when you're putting your attention on your divinity and your love and your presence, then you will keep creating and manifesting that as your experience. And that all that other stuff and all the fear and the concerns that will drop away. And you wonder why you ever carried it with you like a cross or a burden. Right, right. It is kind of, yeah, and we've created quite the illusion out there. Yeah, well, if you can create illusion, then that tells me that you have infinite intelligence. And if we have infinite intelligence, now would be a good time to use it intelligently. <laughs> it would be. So today we're going to talk about fasting. Nice bandana. Is that two bandanas in one? It's a double bandana. Oh, one's my scarf. Oh, one's a scarf. Okay, the one, yeah. from, the one from India or Pakistan? I, I don't know. My friend gave it to me. I don't know where they got it. Doesn't matter. Looks good on you. Yeah. But hi, Laura. I, I'm in Minnesota. Where are you? Nebraska. Oh, nice. Yay. Not too far. I'm out walking my chihuahua right here. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah, That's it's weird. a lovely, lovely day in Minnesota today. Well, good for you. Congratulations. Um, we're the only ones on the call right now, so we're just going to keep going as if we're the only ones going to make the call. Uh, today, we're talking about fasting with urine therapy. Now, now, Laura. I know a girl named Laura, so I have to get the pronunciation. Laura. Well, it's La it's L A U R A, but most people call it Laura here. L Laura. Laura. Okay. 
it's the same. Um, fasting is when you're every minute of the day. This is a fun way to stretch your mind to possibilities here. I want to wait for Laura to get situated here. No, that's okay. You can keep going. I just got to turn my food off. Oh, please. We don't want any burnt food. Sorry, I got to go pretty soon. Not a problem. So listen, every minute of the day you're not eating, you're fasting. Okay, every minute of the day you're not eating, you're a breatharian. So if you can look between the lines, you'll notice that you're not eating more than you're eating. And all you have to do is stretch those windows of eating to not eating, stretch those out, and then you'll discover intermittent fasting, which is typically people don't eat after 6 p.m. and start eating around between 10 o'clock in the morning and noon. That's about a 12 to 18 hour fasting window. The reason people are so excited about fasting is because people are noticing they're healing everything and their energy keeps increasing the, the more they stay away from food. Now, the ultimate goal is not to be a breatharian. The ultimate goal is to be liberated from food slavery. Did you catch that, Laura? Yeah, but I kind of want to because, you know, I just since. OK, so. I, you know, I've been work, trying to heal for 30 years and I've, you know, I've gone raw before I do pretty well on raw, but you know, I, the consistency is hard, especially with some of my challenges I have. And that's why I'm sun gazing now. And, and I've, you know, taken breatharian courses and things. Um, because I, I do like that. And um, I do understand the first three days of not even eating is just your body using its resources to cleanse using up its resources so it can begin to cleanse on the fourth day is what I've learned. And then each day after that, when you're not eating, then you can really get to know yourself and find your superpowers, you know, your ability to see what you couldn't see before and see things in other people that they may have, you know, or, you know, your gifts and talents, your psychic type of abilities. And so, yeah, I'm really oh, like, are you, wait, is are you one a, of my big things I, I want to do because I've learned so much about it. And it like, it's like the, the urine therapy, the fasting, like practice can like do amazing things too. All right. Take a breath. We were talking about quantum healing, guys. And quantum healing is going to require a balance between the four pillars of health. Mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. You can go after the physical all you want. You can fast. You can drink shivambu. You can eat all the right raw foods. But if you're not working out unresolved emotional issues or haven't made peace in your being, that's called well-being then no things are, all those other things you're doing are just going to be uh, temporary fixes. Yeah, but I think the fasting is the part of the emotional healing because when you're not eating and then you're, you can start listening to your body and everything's stored in your body, kind of, you know, you find your stuff and then it's like, oh, wow, there that is, you know, or, oh, wow, this, you know, and that's when you really get to know yourself better, I think. That's what so, I've heard. So while you're fasting, have you had bouts of laughing or crying? I haven't fasted yet. I'm too, I just, because in the, if I go too long without eating, I have pain. So I've got to deal with this, this bile duct before I can, you know, do. Okay. Um, I want you to experiment. And this seems to work well for a lot of people is that when they get those hunger pains to, and it's usually they feel it at the lower end of their intestines, like the sigmoid right before it gets to the rectum, the lower left side quadrant. Some people will just take an ounce or two of shivambu or eat small amount of fruit like a banana or a couple of dates and the hunger sensations go away. What's going on there is that the energy is being moved from the elimination process to the digestion process. So the contractions that were taking place, the intestines slow down and stop because the body needs the energy to break down what you just put in your mouth. So you can you can play with that one without having to have a full meal. Right. Yeah, because that's what I heard, too. The urine can help me with because, you know, when that bile duct, it's so inflamed. And when it starts going, you're you're in trouble. It's it's brutal. 
So, um, and so a lot of people with my disorder or what, you know, with that issue, they have to eat several, every few hours to, to keep from, you know, that crisis happening. Yeah. Um, can you move a little that way? So that sunlight behind you. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Just move the camera. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, now I got it the other way. It's, right there, it's right cloudy there. here. Perfect. Perfect. Right there. So right now you're not eating anything, are you, at this very minute? No, no, I already ate. Okay. But I'm preparing food for tonight because I have to deal. Okay. okay, until you put the next bite in your mouth, you're fasting. How's that feel? It's you're restful. Fast. It is it's, restful. It's restful. Yeah. And getting used to being a being instead of being a doer takes practice for people. Oh, I'm good at being, doing, to, I, I was, oh my gosh, I was dead on the bed for years when they had those pain pills and stuff. That's when I started praying and meditating is because I got off the pain pills and I said, I can't do those anymore and live. Right. So you have what it takes to uh, reclaim your health. And it sounds like you can motivate yourself. I I try. Yeah, it's I I'm really good at being though. I mean, I can sit and just like do nothing all the time. I can just be. I love it. It's like it's almost like I get upset. It's like, oh, I have to go do something. <laughs> well, you can go either way. You just got to be at peace with your choices. So people fast for all kinds of reasons. Some people fast for spiritual reasons. Some people fast for dietary reasons. Some people fast to heal themselves. And whatever your motivation is, you can start anytime you want. Um, for the longest time, I thought I couldn't fast when I was doing my clients and I was working because that was a belief system. And then I found myself doing three or four clients in a day and I hadn't eaten. I didn't think about eating. And I realized, wow, I fasted that day and I still had the strength. So a lot of the things that happen during fast is mental that we have to um, you know, clear the way in our mind that more things are possible than we realize. Take a breath. I've met people who have fasted for 30 days and I've met people who fasted for a year. There's a guy named Dave Moore out in England who's done a 30 day urine fast. He did extraordinarily well. There are people who usually do like a one day, three day, seven day, 14 day fast. There's one guy who's on a 52 day urine fast right now. He's in one of the social media groups. And then there's people who live off fruit uh, who do marathons. There's this guy, I don't know where the heck he lives. I think he's in Australia. He runs hundred mile marathons and he lives on fruit. And the only reason I use these as illustrations is to point out that anything is possible including living your life's dreams and having an extraordinary life, if that's of interest to you. That was a yes. Mm -hmm. So whatever we can do to raise the quality of our thoughts and feed our hearts and feed our souls with positive ideas, uh, the faster your life can transform and change. Because this is our garden right here. So we can't put weeds in the garden. Right, you got to pull out the weeds. You got to put in good plants, beautiful aroma, beautiful smells, and um, watch things change. Watch the relationships you have change. Watch your health change. Watch what you do every day change. And all you did was shift your perception of what's possible. I've been. I was studying with a teacher for ten years. Yes. And self-healing and distance healing classes and you know we always set our intention to synchronize with divine intention and filter every thought and every challenge every emotion through love joy peace and compassion he calls it and we then we practice flowing in that river mm -hmm. and one time about five years ago i was out feeding the chickens and they were in a feeding frenzy they were so happy and I heard pray and I'm like, all right, okay. So I did what he taught me, my spiel. And 
after a few minutes, it got really still and quiet. I opened up my eyes and the chickens were standing still and silent, praying with me. They weren't moving or making a sound. And that was my chicken church. And it forever changed me because I shifted that energy. I haven't duplicated that. And I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I did see that, how powerful that is. Yeah, that's how powerful your presence are when you get stiller and stiller. The other day in one of my hikes, I go for like three and a half, four mile hikes every day. And I stopped by this tree. And as I looked up, there was a falcon circling the tree. I stayed mesmerized looking at the falcon. And he circled the tree three times before he finished his circles and he flew away. And I felt so overwhelmed. I was blessed by the presence of this falcon. And we had a connection. And I I just stay still, enjoy it. Now, they're raptors and birds, but we see them here where I live all the time. And they always remind me it's a symbol of go to higher thoughts. Take your consciousness higher than where it is right now. So if you're, uh, if you're depressed and you're looking down a lot and all of a sudden your, your attention is drawn to look up in the sky, uh, look up in the sky. Because <clears throat> there may be something important up there. Natalie, are you fasting today? Uh, no, I already ate Nutella this morning, so <laughs> I'm not fasting today. <laughs> but I'm wondering when they, when people do do the urine fast, if they drink any water too, or are they just drinking the urine over and over and over and over and over again? Well, you know, it's an intuitive medicine and everybody seems to have a different way of doing whatever they do. So some people drink distilled water with it. Some people uh, alternate it with fruit juice. And I'm going to turn off this phone. And, and some people just um, dilute the urine and drink, that, drink it that way all day. It's however you can do it, but still keep it liquid. Does that make sense? And one of the things we're constantly having to teach people, we got to shake their brain free of old dogma and everything you learned about how to heal yourself and about what medicine is all about is a little bit off, off how we heal ourselves. So we're going to have to rethink things through, but also trust and have faith in your intuition. So, yeah. Now, now people who've been fasting, are doing a really good job. What I love about social media is people will check in with each other because they, they the support, you can't necessarily get it in your town or people in your life. Uh -uh. <laughs> My son's pretty supportive. When I told him I was going to do it, he's like, wow, I heard of that. <laughs> yeah, go mom. Well, I've been fortunate that there's people who live here. I, I share a house called Sanctuary Garden. It's a retreat center in Boulder, Colorado. And one of the guys who lives here and owns the place is a dear close friend of mine of 27 years, and he's a student. He's got both my urine therapy books. He's a student uh, and a friend of his, which is now one of the board of directors of the Shivambo organization, has been doing Shivambo 30 years because you might have met Christopher because he had eczema and his hands wouldn't work. So and, and then the Guptas who live here in town, they're my urine therapy advisors, and they've been doing urine therapy since 1983. And more and more, the people in this town are students of mine. So I got an awesome support group here. And I'd love to help everybody on the planet figure out how to create their own group in their town. In Minnesota. In Omaha. And Please. Nebraska. Yeah, if you put something together and there's a, a good enough reason for me to go visit your cities then uh, we can find the, the strongest advocates in town and put something together that will be long lasting. Now, if I had a ministry, which I do, I'd call this an outreach program for urine therapy. Because in a way, we're all ministers, we're all messengers, and we're all delivering the message that you can heal yourself and be happy and free if that's what you want. And right now, this is the best time to be in this practice because people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They've given up on the medical industry. It is an industry. And they're looking for answers. They're looking for alternatives. Boom. 
you drop urine therapy in their, into their mind and into their thinking, they're likely to hear it right away or start to open up to the possibility that you guys got it right, which we did. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> of all the conspiracies in the world, I think urine therapy is the one that won out. I mean, you can't question it. It doesn't, it doesn't cause you to like hate your brother or sister and um, it doesn't hurt anybody. It's a lovely practice. So this book right here, both books, I've talked about fasting a lot because the people who are fasting need some guidance. Uh, and chapter, chapter seven in this book has all the urine, has all 24 urine therapy protocols. And it talks about fasting, when to collect it, how to use it, questions and answers, what happens if you're hungry, um, when to quit before bedtime. And the most important element is patience. Okay, good. I'm going to get that book today. <laughs> if you want to, I love, copy, I love protocols. I like it all spelled out A, B, C, D. If da, you want da, to da, sign da. copy, I'm shipping these across the United States. I'll go to the site today and get it okay. ordered. Okay. Uh, well, like I said, if you want to sign copy, I, I will, you can buy it from me directly and I'll ship it to you. Okay. Either way, it's a lot of fun. Yes. So uh, I, I, I love you guys, and I'm glad you come to these classes uh, because everything we're doing is historical by nature. Every discovery you have, record it, document it, share it with me so Christopher and I can put it at the, in the Shivambu hut. We're building uh, a whole library and a whole um, content. Uh, I mean, the platform we have. Uh, Shivambu Hut is designed to pull together everybody's great ideas about urine therapy, your testimonials, your insights, your new discoveries, so we can share it with the world. And so we created a nonprofit organization. So if people like nonprofits, they can help fund us. In either case, uh, you, you've come to the right place at the right time and the right intersection with your life and your journey. At least that's how I see it. I feel that I feel like I've came because I just learned about it like about two months ago, I think now. So I, I don't know why I didn't hear about it sooner, but I'm glad I heard about it now. <laughs> yeah. A uh, spirit has an amazing timing. Yeah. And if you picked up on that, Laura, you'll discover, and it might've been your experience that people who uh, resonate and gravitate to urine therapy feel that they were called to this path because nobody is nobody is forcing you or pulling you here it's all your choice right the people who've been embracing it and loving it and becoming like myself a devotee it's not only become a way of life it's been integrated as a lifestyle and i ain't i ain't never leaving this path It's been very liberating to know that I don't buy supplements anymore. I don't need to buy supplements. I don't go to a pharmacy. I don't buy shampoo, conditioner, underarm deodorant, aftershave, this and that. Uh, it's, my, it's, it's my everything first aid kit and, and personal hygiene and wellness. Right there, the nectar of immortality. This is gonna sound kind of gross, but I had my, when I got my menopause, it was, I, I could stay in the bathtub for an hour and wash and wash and wash and I'd still smell. And I just started using coconut oil and baking soda and it worked instantly. I haven't bought anything in a long time. I washed my hair with rice water. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, uh, when, you, when you do it a lot in your hair, it gets darker. I mean, my hair has gotten darker every time I use it. Now, Laura, Laura have you met me before? Mm -mm. Yeah, met me. Okay, get, guess guess how old I am. I I'm very bad at that. I I don't know. I'd say about I would guess fifty. Um, I'm going to be sixty-seven on the twenty-fifth of this month. I hope I look good when I'm sixty-seven. Well, keep on this journey and stay in touch with Natalie, myself, and the whole community of water people. 
I'm kind of liking my grays. Yeah, you might have streaks of black. <laughs> that could be like a skunk. <laughs> yeah, uh, or a sexy skunk, however you want to see yourself. Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. So um, how are you introducing this to anybody or just kind of like taking it one day at a time and see your personal experience? Two, I'm on two days and I've read one book that I got. Well, I read the book online last month and then I got, I ordered one called uh, Your Perfect Medicine or whatever. Market and it, I'm still, I don't know what, but th new things are challenging for me. So then when that guy just said, oh, just get a dropper, just put it in some water, just start doing it, just do it. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can do that. That's easy. Well, you're doing, you're doing what, what, what I've been teaching is called baby steps and baby <laughs> steps. And I want you to learn this because baby steps are a great way to introduce this to newbies who are sitting on the fence. They're kind of not sure about you. If you're some weirdo in a cult or you have crazy hobby, or maybe you're a genius. And so what the first thing I would ask people to do is put your finger in, in, in some pee, collect your pee and put your finger in it. Don't drink it yet. Just notice that you didn't get sick and you didn't die. All right. Then the next step is to touch it and lick it. Notice that you're okay. And see, what we're doing is we're building a new neural net, a pathway to the brain that's gonna come around the old belief systems or maybe dissolve the old belief systems. And then from, the, from there, you'll go to getting a dropper and go from one drop to a whole dropper full to an ounce and so forth. And that's kind of what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, even with my asparagus pee. <laughs> I'm well, like thinking I'm sitting there smelling that I'm like you know this smells because there's something in here and there's something in there is good for me and so this pee is going to be better than yesterday's pee <laughs> that's what I was thinking I was like oh I gotta get some more asparagus well however it comes out some people are concerned about you know what it smells like what the color is what content might be in there or they just got off uh, prescribed drugs and what whatever it is I would still use it at least topically. I got the, I do take a prescription drug, a low dose naltrexone, but okay. it's, I, I, I just, I just take one pill and I put water to it and, I, I, and then I just make it and I take a few like milligrams a day. Okay. So. Is that something, is that something you think you're going to have to take your whole life? Well, you know, I tried to, okay. So I was on the benzos. Mm -hmm. for like 25 years and I couldn't function and I had to get off the benzos and I couldn't sleep without them because you know the, I, I feel like you know I got I got some scratches in my record now so there's that skip at night that wants benzos so when I started the low dose naltrexone for my autoimmune then I didn't have to take the benzos anymore, which was a miracle because I couldn't get off that last half a milligram, no matter how many years I tried because mm -hmm. I became dependent on it, like insulin or something. And so, yeah, I've tried to get off the low dose naltrexone recently. And, oh, uh, I mean, talk about you one some of these like pharmaceutical drugs are way worse to get off of than street drugs. Cause I can, you can quit those. And in a few days, you're like feeling better. Not with this other stuff. It doesn't really happen like that with me, with this. Well, stuff if, if you keep, on. if you keep taking it and you're doing urine therapy, you want to make sure that you do the urine, either drinking or topically two hours on either side of it. Because right, the right. urine, the urine has the information that says, listen, if it's not something that the body needs, it might be an invader and we need to address it. And I took it last night. I took the urine at the same time. Well, about five minutes apart. I'm like, I drank it. And then I took my medicine. I'm like, I'm going to bed. There you go. Working out in your sleep. Yeah. So I just took them together because I'm not, I can't complicate it. Like you said, if I get it too complicated, I'm not going to do it. So I just like, I'm just doing it. Well, fasting would do you a world of good because then you get to separate uh, yourself from the drug for at least a day to see if your body is strong enough to move forward without it. Because oh, I, 
yeah, I've, I tried, well, I've tried titrating it down from three milligrams to one milligram. And I took my time doing it, you know, the, I forget what they call it, but. I don't know, but it sounds like you could wean yourself off of it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get, I'm, I'm going to need to heal my brain a bit though. I think first a little bit, because the cognitive business is unbelievable. Okay, well, there's a urine therapy protocol for that. Good. And it's not only going to help heal the brain, but it's going to open up the sinuses, all five sinuses that have been dehydrated down in here, up here, all across here. It's also going to get through the, if you do it right, there's a way to get it through the blood brain barrier, uncalcify or uh, restore function to the pineal gland, the master gland, and all the different areas of the brain. And the fast way to do that is through the nose by drinking it, sniffing it, or getting it up your nose. Oh, good. Cause I, uh, I noticed I got that COVID last year and ever since I've been having what my mucus looks like worms now, which has been really interesting. And I'm like, oh man, I wonder if this thing's a parasite. And then somebody on, on one of the groups, on one of the parasite groups, a couple of other people said the same thing that they thought they got, that it was like a parasite. Well, you want to know what parasites come from and how to get rid of them? They're everywhere, I guess. I don't know. Maybe everything is kind of a parasite if you want to classify it. Well, every, every microorganism. Every, exactly. A microbe or a microorganism. I mean, there are those that our body requires to establish the right kind of balance in our gut and the flora and the fun and all that. But metaphysically or emotionally, the cause of virus, Natalie will get this one really quick. See, there's only two reasons you get sick. It's either what you eat or what's eating you. And if something's eating at you emotionally or psychically, that's going to invite a virus because you got that kind of thinking going on. Well, it didn't help that I was cleaning toilets either at a you know medical place and a med spa and stuff all the time. But I don't know. But, you know, like I'm always in. Uh, that's why I'm not afraid to pee. I mean, I'm literally been in garbage cans, you know, barns, chickens, you know, alpacas. I mean, I'm just like, you know, it's all, but, um, yeah, I just, and then instead of going to war with it, I just told it, I said, okay, if you're, you, if I die, you die, we're going to live in peace. <laughs> we're going to have peace here. We'll have welcome home, you know, make yourself at home, play nice. Very nice. So you call the war off. There's no more conflict in you. Right. I, I didn't even go to war with COVID. I'm like, you know what? It's the best for us. We're going to live in peace here. It's the best for both of us. So, and I, I was fine. It should have killed me if anybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you have a strong life urge, nothing's going to take you out except your unconscious thoughts. And you see, we are hardwired to be physically immortal, even though they don't teach that in church and they don't teach that in a lot of spiritual paths. But we are designed to be physically immortal. And the only reason we wouldn't live forever is because we have misery inside our souls. If you're joyful, you feel, you know, you feel really connected to your source and you're joyful and grateful and you're living a very filling life. You would never consider anything other than staying here. I know. I was like, this is when they talk about the law of attraction, this would always drive me nuts because for decades, I mean, most of my life, I don't, I wanted to die. And, you know, especially, you know, especially when I started waking up and I realized I had amnesia for 20 years, you know, it's like, oh my God, you know, and it was hard. I was like, used, I was a junkie when I got pregnant. Then when I got my, when I got pregnant, that's when I woke up. And so, and that's when I had to start facing everything. And then after that, the recovery process was so hard and it was so brutal and it was so painful. And now it's like, I want to stay. I love it here. I think this place is great, despite all the, you know, um, Going the modern on. day feudal or whatever. Um, but otherwise, I think that this is like where it's at. This is where it's at. You know, everybody I know, it's like, oh, I got to get out of my mind. I got to go be, you know, or I got to go do this and I got to go be quiet and get get out of my mind. And I'm like, no, your mind goes with you. You know, you make friends with your mind, your mind will be quiet when you want it to be, you know, and you can, you know, your mind is your friend, you know, and everything's great. 
Let's ring the bell for liberation from mental slavery. Yes, or or mental fight, you know, make friends with your mind and your body are your best friends. Yeah, that good point. Very good point, Laura. When you're at peace with yourself, you're in peace with your mind, then whatever's going on in the world, leave it with the world. All right, there's a quote in the Bible that says, the dead will bury the dead. Well, let, basically, people who are dead to spirit are dead to love. They're going to have to take care of themselves. We're the living beings. We're the ones who are connected to the planet. And we're the ones who are going to stay around and make life work. Take a breath. Gratitude is an awesome thing. It seems that the more I'm grateful for things, the more I get things to be grateful for right and then the more you like work you the more you friend your mind the more your mind cooperates with you these people that have monkey minds and that are in conflict with their minds haven't developed a relationship with their minds and become friends with them and so like if my mind starts you know playing too much or something and i'm trying to do like something else i'm like okay let's do this later okay okay i get you know and then i get it to cooperate yeah, well, self-love self includes loving the mind and everything, it everything, all the activity in the mind. I mean, if we're judging our mind or we're judging our behavior or we're judging our body or we're judging anything, uh, we're not being kind to ourselves. And that's right. where the conflict, that's the conflict. Now, this is on a personal level. All the people on the planet, they're in war themselves is what's creating war on the planet. Yeah, a lot of my spiritual friends are at war with their minds. Mm -hmm. Right. And thanks to the pandemic last year, a lot of people on the same spiritual path became polarized with each other. I mean, I lost a lot of friends who are, hopefully they'll be coming back because they had a different way of interpreting the reality that we, we were going through. You know, some people thought it was real. Some people thought it was fake. Some people thought da 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 And in, right in the middle of it is, Hey, can we love each other and let everybody's belief system just sort it out? Yeah, you know, the way I see it is both sides are kind of right. You know, there is, it's there. And the other stuff that, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? All that uh, um, agenda is there. The agenda is there. The, the COVID's there. Everybody's here. And, but nobody can believe like both everybody has to be like pick one side and it's like both well that's the reason we had religious wars because everybody, yeah, we have everybody government fought for wars. their belief systems their belief systems had nothing to do with unity consciousness and oneness consciousness it had to do with defending something that separated you from everybody yeah Ridiculous. we got that's the problem with everything well, in the middle of everything, there's a blessing going on if we pay attention. Yeah, and the unity's there. That's the blessing, I think. Mm -hmm. So any questions? We still got about 25 minutes on our class. If you have any questions about urine therapy. I do. Go for it. Clean catch. What's the clean catch business? Am I, you know, I mean, I know you said it's all intuitive or anything, but especially since I am taking a medicine and you know, maybe not drinking enough water or too much sugar or whatever. All right, Laura, um, what, what's your definition of clean catch? You know, like when you go to the doctor, they make you, you know, use the alcohol wipe and then you have to pee a little bit and then you have to try to catch the rest. And, you know, that I've noticed every, if I try to do that, then well, then I can't stop peeing and then I can't. And then by the time I'm trying to catch it, there's hardly any left. Okay, the, I think the clean catch that you're referring to, some people call midstream. And here's another Middle. love. Here's another lovely thing to wrap around your mind. Since we're, uh, I'm always pointing out the the key points of urine therapy. All right, one of the things that Harry Matadine, you might have heard of Harry out in England, is that we've been people teaching people is to toss out all dogma about using intuitive medicine called urine therapy. Because the mainstream idea goes back or five the midstream, five, midstream, <laughs> mainstream, um, whatever you want to call it, goes back 5,000 years to the teachings of the Damar Tantra, which is in my book, 
uh, in which Shiva and Pavarti bring to the world a nine-year program of using urine therapy to not only heal everything, but to achieve physical immortality. Well, somewhere in that teaching, it talks about collecting the midstream, and I'll explain why that doesn't really apply to us in 2021. They talk about collecting the midstream because that's based on superstition and tradition. The tradition they followed said that the water that came through our bodies was symbolic of the snake, and the head of the snake was poisonous, the tail of the snake was deadly, so we would chop off both ends and just collect the midstream. You with me so far? Right. Okay, now, since Shibambu is a universal water that is the best antiviral, antiseptic, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-cancerous water, et cetera, on the planet, it cannot either bring us bad bacteria or be affected by bad bacteria. So every drop is the Shivambu, from the first drop that comes through the urethra, it comes out the bladder, to the last drop is all precious, it is all the medicine. So to think that some is nasty and, some, and the rest is good, that's based on superstition and tradition. Yeah, it comes out of the same balloon. <laughs> it comes out of the same container. As a matter of fact, if you're not already doing this, I recommend that you, you get yourself a pea cup, whatever you want to use that you can collect it with, with a lid on it, and carry it in your car or in your backpack. Because wherever you go, you might have to use it. I got to the point that when I go to the library, in the, in the downtown library, I got to pee, I go into the bathroom, I bring my Shin Vambu out or I drink it there. It's like gold to me. I don't want to waste it. It is gold. <laughs> it, it, it is gold and is a reminder. Liquid it gold. It's enormous. It is. Have you ever dried it? Have you heard about people drying this out? Uh -uh. Yeah, I got my hands on nine year old, excuse me, was it nine month? Nine month old dried uh, Shivambu crystals. I went to the Water of Life Symposium in Las Vegas in 2018 with 80 pea drinkers. And one of them was Dr. Rosalind Hansen. She's a naturopath and uh, an herb master. I don't know where she lives. Anyway, she was passing around a little key container with all her crystals in it. And we got a chance to look at it, examine it. Um, and she said that that's what uh, the alchemists call white powder of gold. The alchemizing, like St. Germain talked about the white powder of gold, something that would change base metals into gold. So more and more people are drying it out and going, wow, maybe this is that thing the fountain of youth that everybody was searching for this is kind of funny because okay so robert Seffer was talking about after you're born again if you're not alchemizing what or you know like on the ascension process like you're not alchemizing you're still not really i forget how he put it but more or less the wheat and the chaff or whatever there's just those that are you know the born again process has to be continued and through an alchemizing work and i was like you know so then i kind of was like, like yesterday i'm like okay where's the fruit where's the fruit where's the fruit where is this fruit at who's got this fruit of this that this alchemizing process is working and then here i am and you're telling me all about it and i'm like oh my god this is weird well there's the alchemization process and then there is a state of being that people call awakening now, the irony of awakening, you might have heard the old saying, before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. Once you wake up, you're just more aware, but you still have to work to stay awake. Right, right. But I mean, I'm talking about, okay, because see, this is my thing, because, you know, as a spiritual person, I got like, well, saved in 1986 technically but i was already like i had my i already was with i thought it was an angel my guide whatever and i was like okay we'll make this official and then 
that's when I started getting delivered and my life started changing and everything. And, um, you know, so Jesus said we would do greater things. Like you're talking about immortality, you know, living, we can live without food and water. We can transcend all these limitations we've been taught and we can, you know, like these are the things we're, we should be doing. And that's what I was saying yesterday. Cause like I said, Robert Seffer was talking in his about some video he had on baptism and water and the alchemizing process of ascension and whatever. And I'm like, where is this fruit at? Where is this fruit at? God, I'm not seeing it. Where is it? And well, it, well. it is. It, there's just so much more to it than just, you know, trying to stay awake, I think. You know, I mean, that's good. That's a good place to start. Well, how about getting in the practice of seeing everything through the eyes of love? Without even making getting caught up in spiritual lingo and spiritual expressions, which a lot of us do, we fall behind those things. I've been known to do that. It's just express and experience and enjoy love as much as you can every day. And then you'll be in an enlightened state. Yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of, I don't know. I guess I kind of, I'm, all, I'm a more... Down to earth? No. I... <laughs> I would, I have to stay, I have to work hard to stay grounded. Um, you know, I'm. Do I this guess, a lot. Do this a lot. Walk barefoot every day for as much as you can. I go for hikes barefoot. I walk up mountains barefoot. I go through lakes barefoot. And everybody in town knows me as the barefoot doctor because I do a lot of foot massage and reflexology. That's yeah. the free grounding. Uh, device it's called your body yeah i do it when i sun gaze now i've been sun gazing since february mid-february every day very nice for how long 20 uh, minutes almost three months no i'm up to 17 minutes a day now nice nice so you got a full out gaze on the sun i i started at 10 seconds a day and sometimes 15 seconds jumps but it's been cloudy lately so i've been doing it midday but sometimes if i can't make it to the last hour of sunset i do it during the the end of the day you know the high point with my eyes closed and i kind of like my eyes closed better because i can feel the color the, the warmth and the energy just permeate my whole body but one time it was cloudy and I was doing it and I could see, I started to see the rays in the, I could tell them like, they look like, you know, air around fire. I could start seeing like the moisture in there sparkling and, you know, it is, it's amazing because it does improve your inner and outer vision. It's, it's cool. Are you wanting to heal your eyes? Um, yeah, I mean, glasses? I want to heal everything, you know, but I'm not, I'm just doing it because I, I don't even know why I started doing it for, you know, to help me with as for microcurrent type of energy, you know, more breatharian type of thing. But now I'm just doing it because there it's it's special it's really it's it's so cool it's like at first i thought what am i going to do how am i going to sit here for all this time and now it's like oh i don't want to stop yeah well you've merged with the source of light who'd want to stop that by the way if you uh, get into the protocols in the book you'll discover eye cups you know what an eye cup is um probably just i can guess doing that yeah it, it forms a suction over the eye and you put the aura inside the eye cup you blink four or five times and just look at it for as long as you can like two or three four or five minutes whatever and then switch to the other eye and then when you're done with that just pour the rest of it over your iris and your cornea and uh so it can address any kind of eye issues or floaters or cataracts or night vision or blurredness or whatever it is that uh might be a problem yeah, I have all that. I'm blind in my right eye almost completely. Yeah, get on eye rinses as soon as you can. Yeah, and I use the sun. I just love it. I can't, I mean, it's just like, I'm like, wow, I wish I would have done this sooner too. Well, now you know, and now you can use this. And every one of the protocols um, will help you speed up the process because when you start doing what I've been teaching is called uh, saturation dosing. 
instead of just drinking it, which is fine, but if you want to accelerate the cleansing, the detoxification, etc., start doing foot soaks, enemas, fasting, eye rinses, uh, nasal drinking, belly button soaking. I mean, there's a whole lot that you can work with. Yeah, you know, I noticed that I had a surgery once and they went it through my belly button. And I don't think my belly button closed all the way up and it smells really bad. I mean, it reeks. I mean, if you just even try to move it, you can smell the odor will come out. I'm like, oh my God, what they do to me? It's like open all the time, I think. Yeah, get one of these things, a cotton ball. Soak it, stick it on your belly button when you go to bed at night or if you're going to lay down for a while, you might want to put a gauze or tape or something to keep it in place. But this is like a slow drip method into your belly button. Now, I have an article. I can always get it for you. It's about the navel soak. There's over 72,000 nerve endings that are in your belly button when the umbilical cord gets cut that reach all the organs of your body. And people have been using navel soaks to get rid of headaches and get rid of asthma, get, you know, all kinds of conditions. So it's another great protocol to add. Oh, that one's easy too. That one just like that's a that one takes no brain, no no concentration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same with this thing, a cotton pad. You just start being doing things over your face. You don't think about it. during the day. You exfoliate your hair and your I mean your face. You put it over your eyes if you've got sun problems or blemishes or liver spots. I mean, when this becomes your go-to, you just start working on your health you'll find all kinds of ways to improve it. Oh, I'm excited because yeah, I'm, I, I'm, oh, this is, I'm, this is really exciting. And it just, it does this. I've, I've never been this excited about anything, not even about the sun gazing. I mean, I'm well, excited when, about sun gazing now, but I wasn't before. See, Natalie's excited for you too. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love your enthusiasm. And I, I really liked seeing your picture on the wall behind you. It's so peaceful. It reminds me of you. <laughs> there it is. Oh, that, yeah, that's what, a Buddha. And then I got yeah. my little, uh, all my foods in the way, but I got my little Laura, Laura Ganesh. Oh, oh yeah, you got Buddha. Very nice. Yeah, I got, I'm in disabled housing now. This is for, I've just moved in in October. I waited three years to get affordable housing here in Omaha. And now I have my own little space, but it's like an EMF nightmare. They put up a 5G right behind my house and then, you know, everything's all electric and it's been really messing with me. And I've been, uh, but, oh, you got to see this. I got my Russian pyramid. And oh. I don't know if and you you're sitting in it. a pyramid. I've got this pyramid and I hooked up. I've got the, the caduceus coil now because I'm in the uh -huh. pyramid research foundation group. And I got my caduceus coil, my frequency generator. I'm going to start working with Barbara Hero's Lambona frequencies, Pygoras frequencies for my cells. And I'm going to start using those now. I've got that all set up. Very and nice. uh, I needed knee surgery. My knee was like, torn meniscus i went through physical therapy all these cortisone shots i couldn't walk my knee was so red hot i couldn't even go outside of my house without the the heat of the sun couldn't touch it and mm -hmm. so i went over there we did gw harden's frequencies for some kind of what do they call them an angelic gate travel so i go to my friend's house and we're playing around in her pyramid with this these frequencies right and then are I you time that. traveling are you time traveling no, it was more like they call them gateways and you go through like these like stargates or something. Yeah, interdimensional. It's GW Harden. And I'm working okay. with Carol Altwater at Altwater Tech mm -hmm. Frequency. She does water frequency. She's amazing. Grandma Chandra sent me there because that's who Grandma Chandra goes to. And um so anyway, I get out, I'm, we're done. And she's, my friend's like, well, let's look at your knee. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I take my brace off. My knee was ice cold and all my swelling was gone from doing those frequencies in the her pyramid. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm on this. And it's been over a year and my, I haven't had to have knee surgery. It never came back. I, I, I'm telling you this, this little Russian pyramid, I get at Stargate pyramids, Charlie Z's. He, he makes them out of PVC 
And then uh, Lisa makes the little, you know, um, capstones and stuff. And then we do all these experiments, all that we used to do them all the time. Now Charlie's writing a book, so we don't do much. Are you, are you working? Are you working with Organite at all? Um, Lisa makes hers out of all kinds of crystals and stones, and uh, she uses crystal sand, bionized sand, and mm -hmm. you know, to boot to. And uh, I have a bionized sand like a uh, shelf on the top because if you re raise it towards the top, the energy gets more concentrated, you know, and based on Dr. Golod's research out of Russia with this pyramid, I put my water in there, I pray over my water, I do all kinds of weird things. All yeah, well, you sound like you're a natural energetic healer. I'm a harmonium healer too. I got a scholarship at Nam Yoga, but nobody wants it. I can't, you know, nobody comes. I'm like, come on, people, come on, come on, come on. And nobody's just like, so I trade with my friend, you know, here and there, right? There you go. There you go. We still got about five or six minutes. Let's go to uh, anybody, any more urine therapy questions. Have you, have you uh, thought about introducing this to new people? I'm going to, you know, give it a shot first. Okay, because ultimately, whether you tell anybody or not, they're going to see your health improve. They're going to see the glow in your skin. They're going to see the radiance coming out of your eyes. And you're going to just live for that moment. When people say, you look great, Laura. What have you been doing? I'm going to say urine. <laughs> I, I drink my pee, doesn't everybody? <laughs> Yeah, my son, he's he's like, he's pretty cool. He's like, yeah, you know, if I get better, I'm sure he'll start doing it. How old is your son? Um, 28. Oh, 28. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, he's 28 now. So has he started or does he uh, think that mom's cool or not, not cool? He's uh, kind of in his own recovery process, you know, he's a, uh, he's a smart kid, but he, I don't, you know, he's got whatever he's trying to work out. He get, finds these really uh, sociopathic women, you know, he's empathic. He healed a dog once. I took him to Reiki classes with me when he was 13. He healed a dog. He's an empath. And then all these psychopathic, sociopathic women started showing up and He's finally got over that now. <laughs> well, um, yeah, for whatever reason, he keeps creating these women. It's going to help him heal that that part of him. Yeah, his ever, dad and, was a sociopath. So Okay, a second generation. Okay, got it. And it's the same with the addictive uh, behaviors. It, it's passed down. I mean, I had trouble with, with my, I went through my share of drug addiction, sex addiction, uh, media addiction, all that stuff. Because my parents were dealing with alcohol uh, and cigarettes, and when when I broke free of that, why? What a relief that was! It is, yeah. So I brought my kid up real spiritual. So he's and it, you know I let him like make decisions. Like when he left treatment for like the fourth time, and he's like, "I got to go to the methadone clinic, mom." And I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Just trust you. me, huh?" <laughs> I'll drive you. Let's go. And uh, I, I did. I took him. I'm like, well, he says, I got to get some pain pills. I got to pass the test. And I did. And I supported him. I'm like, I think it's a mistake, but I'll support you because people make mistakes. So if you're going to make a mistake, go ahead. And I took him and it worked. But then when he quit that, he almost died. He's like, oh, I'm going to quit now. And he just like dropped it. You know, he's a hard head, but I would love to talk to him. I'd love to talk to him. He's a good kid. Well, where I live at Sanctuary Garden here in Boulder, Colorado, uh, I get a good percentage of my students are in their 20s and 30s. Because it seems that that generation is r ripe uh, for waking up and getting to know who they are. Because, you know, they see through all the domestication and the programming from society, religion, education, television, and so forth. Uh, but they don't have a, uh, a context of which to understand uh, how their nature has been uh, communicating with them. So it's helped. It really helps to reconnect people to their their intuition and to their uh, higher self. Yeah, he just got done doing this girl lady named Dorota. She's like a opera healer singer. Uh -huh. She does energy work by through sound. 
she's a gorgeous, gorgeous healer from Ukraine or somewhere. And uh, he just, I just got a program for him for that. And he did it. And it was like, really helped him a lot. Yeah, very nice. Uh, yeah. And I would also recommend for you is to uh, either stay tuned with Natalie and myself, plug into the water family community so that, because uh, what I love about the community is people are open, available, understanding, compassionate. I mean, you, you can plug into immediate family that loves you and will support you. Good, because I don't have anybody but my son pretty much. I don't get out much. And, and I... I kind of have a low tolerance for ignorance. You know, I try, I try to be, I'm really compassionate and understanding, but at the same time, you know, I can't cope with it. I'm like well, go over there with that shit. I have to give you a, a heads up. I don't like the word warning, but when this video gets uploaded onto YouTube, somebody's going to hear it. <laughs> when this gets loaded onto social media, there's going to be people that hear your story and say, yeah, I want her in my family. I mean, oh, there's, no, cool. there's no telling what kind of connections we'll make because I'm connected to millions of people because of the work I do on this planet. So all kinds of people, where they run their networks through me. I don't know if you notice this, Natalie, but people run their networks through me and they meet other networks and they collaborate with other people uh, who are on the same journey. So you might find yourself uh, connecting with a whole new community through all these groups. That'd be nice because like I said, I've been looking for fruit everywhere the fruit is everywhere if, if you're looking for it it's the same with the signs show me a sign okay i'd like to connect with you laura because I, I don't know your last name so i couldn't find you on i wouldn't be able to find you on facebook like to send you a friend request i'm on laura wanice yeah. j-a-u-n-i-c-e wanice dewitt d-e-w-i-t-t -T. laura oh, Juanice DeWitt, Juan, like J A U N I C E. I'm a Juanice. And you're on cool. Facebook? Yeah. I, wrote I don't know why well. I used my middle name, and my son's on Facebook. He's got his middle name in there, too. Oh, that's cool. Our cats have middle names. <laughs> cool. I'll why send not? you a friend request. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, do that. Yeah, hey, I'll send you one, too. Great. That's awesome. And you'll, you get to meet my 5,000 Facebook friends. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I'm on the urine, a couple of urine therapy groups and a breatharian group and um, mucus free, Professor Spira. Oh, yes. Great teacher. Yeah. yeah. Well, wonderful, wonderful. So uh, how are you feeling right now, everybody? I'm excited. I'm going to go pee. Oh, well, I won't stop you. <laughs> On our last Zoom call, I, I, I was so engaged in the conversation, I realized I had to pee. So I just basically put the jar underneath my desk and said, guys, carry on. I'm collecting my water. And uh, was so <laughs> I know I had this thing coming on and I'm like, I'm in the bathroom pee. And I'm like, well, if they hear me pee and they're, they're going to understand. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you can tell this group you pee in the bathtub and they go, way to go. Yay. <laughs> You I know what? That's you... really weird. I had a dream about that this morning. Now that you reminded me, I had a dream that in my and in, in my dream I had all this like I had all this pee like pour, go I was pouring in my bathtub, and then now I added you... water to it. But then I added water to it. That's so weird. I forgot that. Well, did you get to the protocol talking about urine therapy bathing? Um, I mean, I've heard it soaks and stuff, and I was thinking about trying to poultice, you know, I'm collecting some to put on my bile duct, you mm -hmm. know, instead of castor oil. Well, a urotherapy bath, when you bring that up to people in the conversation, they think that you have to collect like 10 to 20 gallons of urine so you can fill up the bathtub so you can do a total body submersion. Well, you don't have to go to that extent unless you've been collecting for a while. In the meantime, whatever you have, a quart, a gallon, or whatever, what I would suggest is start filling up the bathtub with the water, stand in the bathtub, do the protocols over your face, your eyes, your nose, your belly button, your whole body, and then pour the rest into the bath. And you, what you got is diluted uh, urine therapy bath water in which it's alchemized the chlorine and fluoride and crap in the city water. 
cool. Yeah, I got a little bath crystal for that too. There you go. So now, yeah. now everybody's going to be calling me up and going, hi, I just took a urine bath, Sage. That was so much fun. <laughs> it's really weird. I did dream about that this morning. Well, now you better get collecting. That's going to be my number one thing. And my son gazing. I'm going to check back on you. And, and Natalie, you've not shown me your water closet, but I've got Bob, probably around six to eight gallons stored up in three locations. And every now and then I walk around with my camera and I show people and I, I date them. So I've got some urine that's six years old, three years old, three months old. And so I can look back and just play around with the dates. But I have a water closet. Do you? I have about this much. <laughs> Well, most but, people keep it under their bathroom sink because they don't want it, people to know they do this. Well, don't you? Do you reuse it? I mean, I'm just wondering, how can you store up that much? I'm having trouble drinking eight cups a day of water to get my pee out, you know? <laughs> I'm yeah, trying you, to push water. Well, somebody asked me that just the other day. They said, well, I have some I use, I use, I use. It's aging, it's evolving, it's getting darker. Can I still use it? Will it lose its power? I said, it increases its power the longer you have it. It increases the stem cells, the antibodies, the nutrients that are in it. You can use it as many times as you can imagine, or you can rub it on your body topically, or you can put it in your plants. You know, I got an orchid I bought in October. I've never had one last this long. It looks like brand new. And I think it's that pyramid because when I put this pyramid up, my other plant, instead of growing towards the, the window, it grows, it reaches to the pyramid. I have. A, I should put some pee in my pyramid. Your pee, yeah, do that. Put some pee in your pyramid, put it in your plants. Um, I, I put my pee in the sunlight. I have my canning jars. I just use my canning jar. I have like, eight canning jars under my sink in my bathroom but I set it in the sunlight in my bathroom window so if my pee gets to sun gaze then <laughs> Very nice. oh, that's that's powerful energy and, that's like and I, that's that's I good put my crystals in it too I have a lot of crystals and stones so I put them in my pee too so then they get the sun with the pee at the same time too yep so yep. everybody's supercharging their water water's it right now water you're right that's probably why urine therapy is just like boat starting to wake up because the water is waking up the water's like the, right now the water is just doing so much in the world well that's you listen to the, that oracle girl i mean she says like the she think, said the canada lakes are like the akashic water records and she they they she the water's been doing all kinds of stuff i hear about all the time, water, water, water. Well, we, we've got the best of the best distilled water. And Andrew, Andrew Norton Weber has been preaching that for years when he was public. He was telling people the, the uh, molecular structure of urine and the molecular structure of distilled water are very similar. And distilled water, if you've ever played with distilled water, the word itself, if you Divide the word apart, distill means to do the opposite or to make it active. So distilled water is active, activated water. Urine is activated distilled water. I mean, the more you go down this urine therapy rabbit hole, the more you realize that this is a very unique, magnificent gift that you're, you have. I say my pee is the greatest part of me. <laughs> You know, if water is consciousness or water is the, the, the medium that carries the consciousness because it's everywhere, it's in the, even in the atmosphere, you know, it's, there's water everywhere. And so if water is that, that medium, I mean, water, there's this lady on Facebook, water consciousness movement. She puts pictures under the Petri dishes and then she puts them in the freezer and then the water brings the picture, reproduces the picture not just the, the like emoto with the snowflakes i'm so she glad makes, you brought them up. yeah she, she the water remembers the image and freezes it into itself for her this is what i would like you guys to do i've not done this yet but i've asked people to do this this is some of the research uh, i've been wanting to do with our organization is twofold one is to get a curlian photography picture of a person before and after drinking their urine. 
to see the energy shift, to see the aura colors change. You know what curling photography is? Yeah, the, the, they call it aura photography. Aura photography, right? There are people have these specialty cameras, they're thousands of dollars, and they can capture your colors around your body, the field. The other thing, since you brought up a moto, I would like somebody to put words like love over their bottle, their jar, and then words that are negative, like hate and fear and war, and take a picture of the quality of the water. Because when Emoto did it, he had close-up pictures and he could see one was really still and calm, the other one was agitated and, and highly frictional. So yeah, but we, he had special photography he invented to be able to do that. Ah, uh, can you give and, me a phone number? Yeah, I don't know, but um, the Veda, her name's Veda something, Water Consciousness Movement. She's the, Veda Austin. What's She's on name? Facebook, Veda, V-E-D-A, Veda Austin. A-U-S-T-I-N? Yes. And, and she's what? she's a moderator for the water consciousness movement on Facebook. She posts a lot of her work there, but she also has a website. Do well, you know what it is? Um, I think it's just Veda Austin. I'm, I can't remember, but if you just type it in, want Veda Austin water, it'll come up. And if you look at her examples of, you know, the, like, they're amazing. She even did one of a guy on a 5G tower, but the bottom of it wouldn't form Where into she the live? picture. I don't know. Is she but still she's active? cool. She's on Facebook. She lives okay. on Facebook. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to her. There are some prime people on this planet that, that I feel guided to talk to. She might be one of them. Another she's one. She's a water photographer. I'm going to talk to uh, Prime Minister of India, uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, so that he can give the public acknowledgement of urine therapy to people of India. Yeah, well, what I read today was that the, somebody from India was telling them not to do it from their, you know, one of their uh, officials. In that article that they somebody was asking about today in the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. yeah oh no don't be doing that they were saying you know because yeah uh, no people aren't fooled by that stuff but um there's this doctor in india he does he promotes the budwig diet he's a big promoter of joanna budwig he's uh right. he's the medical director of rajasthan india mm -hmm. he might be open to reading your book great because he's <laughs> healing people with everything food wig well if you could send him a link to my amazon link to the book uh then he can access it or or contact me directly yeah yeah because uh he's a really nice guy okay uh copy manual i'm gonna send you um laura if you're interested in copying my book let me know and I can ship it out today or tomorrow. I'm gonna go order it right now. Oh, do you want to order it through Amazon or through me? Um, I can order it through you because uh, I don't need it right away because the other one isn't even here yet. But I have Prime, you know, fast. They get it fast. Oh, okay. Well, however you get your hands on it, either way, this makes it a collector's item because it's personally autographed. <laughs> I don't collect anything anymore. Except my urine. There you go. And you, you're going <laughs> to, you heard that, Natalie. Wonderful. Um, let's come to the close of our class. And uh, if there's any last comments, feedback, or suggestions you'd like to offer for our viewers, now would be the time. Just collect your Any urine. closing remarks? Drink your pee and live for a long time. Pray over your pee. Pray over the water, all the water. May all beings be blessed with the knowledge of their own water. Natalie, a, a last few comments before we close the call. Well, I said this comment earlier, but I always say my pee is the greatest part of me. So I like saying that. Your consciousness. 
if it's water and it's consciousness, that's maybe that's how it works on you spiritually because you're it's taking that consciousness and infusing your body. Your, it's like you're alchemizing. Our, maybe that's the consciousness alchemizer we've been missing. Yeah, it's an evolutionary water. So what it's going to do is it's going to vibrate your consciousness loose of any restrictions. So it can return to that consciousness of God, Christ, oneness, unity, or whatever it is. And so you'll be fully available and awake so that you can be a better service to everybody. I want to raise the dead. I want to raise the sick. I want to, I want, I want, I want, I want, I, I just want, I just want, I'm an emanator. So that's my gift. Like when I've got the chickens to, you know, shift with me, I'm that's, I know that's my abilities. I'm an emanator. I can just like take that energy.